and we're gonna talk to you about some tips about taking pictures with your own bike. The best shots come from the best light. Here's another example of what people often do. Given way too much headspace and chopping off the feet or the most important part, like your motorcycle. Moto Lady, also known as Alicia. How long have you been doing Moto Lady? Uh, Moto Lady turned 10 this year in January. Yes. yes. When I found you, it was still, we were still like the Tumblr days, okay? Tumblr. Yes, and you were like halfway through pulling apart uh, your monster to create Pandora. And I was like, oh, if this girl can like pull apart this bike like to the tiniest pieces, I could work on my carburetors. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, going into something like that and knowing nothing about it, I guess, yeah, it had the effect of being empowering for other people because like, hey, if I'm gonna try to customize a Ducati, like, yeah, you can pull out your carburetors and clean them out, right? Yes. <laughs> Tell me about how you got into photography. I got into photography before I can even remember getting into photography. Um, I was really into snapping photos, you know, when I had a little crappy like Olympus digital camera when they first started coming out. <laughs> and uh, then my grandma gave me her old film camera and it was an old German Balda, like, and I used that in photography class. Didn't get to take photography till I was in senior year. They've already been doing it for a long time. So then after that, I started doing makeup artistry and styling. It was a whole different life. Uh, and then I started doing my own professional photography professional. So it's been a while. Yeah. It's, it's been a bit. It's been more than half my life. Yeah. So I am an amateur photographer at best. So I brought her along because I knew that she would know more than me. Well, Amanda, you are maybe an amateur photographer, but I put that in heavy quotes because if you do it for your work like you do, then it's still professionally and your photos are great. They're way better than a lot of professional photographers. <laughs> so it's all about perspective, right? Yes. So nice to me. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna get moving and we're gonna talk to you about some tips about taking pictures with your own bike because I know that all of us have lots of pictures of our bikes and uh, just a different background, but not a whole lot of pictures with us and our bike. And I think that's really important. And I find that the pictures that I have myself in them at a place that's really beautiful and I really enjoyed going there is more valuable and more memorable for me than just my bike in that place. It's definitely more memorable. Yes. Like even if you love looking at your motorcycle, yeah. It's still better in 10 years when you look back on it and you're in it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. We're going to give you a really quick crash course. Um, general rule of rule of thirds is that there is going to be a line here and a line here and then a line here and a line there. Ideally, you want the head of your subject or the most important part of your subject to be on a cross line with those lines. So here, 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 okay. Or straight down the center um, if you want to be symmetrical. Um, you also want your horizon line to either be on this bottom line or this top line or straight in the middle if you want to be symmetrical. Again, but ideally like an asymmetrical frame is a little bit more interesting. I am not classically trained. She is very classically trained. And so, uh, you know, what you learn is the rule of thirds like she just explained. And then after you master it, you can just break it in half and do whatever you want because you'll kind of have the, you'll have the overall vibe when you're looking through the lens at what you're trying to capture and when things are not being interrupted. Like the last thing you want is like a big post sticking out of Amanda's head. You know? And now there's an ice cream truck. <laughs>
Step one, be presentable. <laughs> All right, we set up a kind of little shot here so y'all can see what we would be going for if we're shooting ourselves. So you're making the entire scene a scene and you're making yourself and your bike part of it, right? The whole point is that this background is beautiful. Something that's really important to keep in mind when you're setting these shots up is giving you and your bike, your subject, room to breathe. And that's partially because you want all of this beautiful background with it. All right, another really important thing to think about is your horizon line and where that is interrupting your subject, your bike, what have you. So before it was somewhere up here versus now we've dropped the camera and it almost gives you a completely different shot because you have a completely different perspective. Here's another example of what people often do. Given way too much headspace and chopping off the feet or the most important part, like your motorcycles. So just keep all of that spacing in mind and give yourself room because you know what? You can always crop it down. We're at a whole new location, except we're not. It's literally looking the other direction from the gorge where we were just at. So keep in mind, you might have a beautiful shot just behind you. Utilize your location to the best of your ability. A lot of times people ask me, who took the photo? And I say, me, but they don't realize it was on a tripod. So make sure you get a nice tripod set up. And something else to consider is if your camera has a remote setting so you can actually look at it all while you're working, all set up and be like, oh yeah, that's perfect. And then hit the timer, put that in your pocket and pose. Another thing you can do if you don't have a remote is set your timer and then run into your frame. The best shots come from the best light. You can't always shoot at golden hour. That's first thing in the morning or last thing before the sun goes down, just like now. Thanks, Mother Nature. <laughs> if you can't find golden hour, if you can't make it to golden hour, if you arrive at a beautiful destination and the light sucks, just try not to get yourself half in or out of shadows. Also, if you can't help but to shoot in direct sunlight, Either leave your helmet on or make the shot super wide, your squinty eyes will be less noticeable. <laughs> One of the reasons golden hour is best is because the light is soft and the shadows are long. When, you're, when you've got a, a high noon time of day, it's gonna be right in your face, super harsh, really not that attractive. Another thing to avoid is put your camera right in front of the light source. If you can't avoid harsh light, try to get yourself into some shade or something because it's going to take away all of the other problems that you get from harsh sunlight. Another important factor in photography is posing. There's always the classic behind your bike because you know, she is a sexy machine, but there's a bunch of other ones too. Try not to do the same pose every time because you might not notice while you're doing it, but when you scroll through the photos, you will. Take your weight and move it from side to side. You can stand center, and then you can just move off. Then you can move off. Triangle shapes are very pleasing to the camera. Something that it's a little pet peeve of mine, if you've got your bike up, put the kickstand up too. Off in the distance at the camera. A little aside that I think is valuable to keep in mind, if this arm is tucked behind you, you may look like an amputee, which is okay. But if it's there, you might want to show it off. <laughs> I hope that you guys got something from today's video. Maybe learned something you didn't know before. Thank you so much, Moto Lady, for coming and helping me make this video. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Moto Lady also hosts her own event called Women's Motorcycle Show. This year, or the 2022, is going to be like their seventh year. Seventh year. So cool. Um, and the whole point is to highlight uh, motorcycles made for and by women. Do you want to plug that? women's custom built bikes, built by women or for women, raced by women, that sort of deal. Um, and one thing that I wanna plug right on back at you is that this is how Amanda and I started working together or Magpie Lady as it were, uh, is that she does all of the artwork every year for Women's Motorcycle Show. And honestly, like this is not me fluffing your feathers. If it weren't for the amazing art, people would not like it half as much. So, <laughs> I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Hit that like and subscribe button. <laughs> and also, if you don't follow this lady on Patreon, it's a dollar a month. I don't know what your excuse is, but she makes amazing content like this, okay? And she does it all for y'all. So go do it. It's a dollar a month. Dollar. Pat <laughs> Patrons also get early access videos like these ad-free before the rest of the world, before it goes public. Let's do it. Question for my end screen crew. What was your favorite part of this video? Yay! <laughs> we'll see you guys.
you guys later. <laughs>